Now, if you've ever been to a really good movie theater, you know how much that sound can truly impact a movie. In fact, it can make all the difference in the world. So if you're gonna build your own home theater, you might as well put those speakers inside your house. There's only one problem with that. You can't buy them. No one can. I mean, that is unless you own a movie theater. I would assume you don't. So if you can't buy them, and you want them, what do you do? We're gonna build them, of course. As I scoured the internet for inspiration, I came across these. These are the Klipsch KPT-8000Ms, and these were designed for rear speakers for a small theater. And honestly, they're perfect. All right, so now that we have our speaker for inspiration, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things that they did well that we wanna replicate. First, the frequency response of 75 hertz to 20 kilohertz. This allows us to cross over by 70 hertz. I think that's a must. Next, the sensitivity. It's between 95 and 97 decibels. We need to have a highly sensitive speaker so we don't need to push a lot of wattage. It is a nominal 8 ohm impedance. That way you can run it right off of your home theater receiver. It has a very wide horizontal coverage. And finally, it's really thin. Now I've picked out a perfect set of components that will meet those goals. Starting out with the Celestion TF1020. This meets all of our criteria. It can be in a small box and is highly sensitive. It's gonna work out perfectly. And it matches up really good with the wave guys we chose, which is the Dayton H6512. Now this is a constant directivity waveguide. This waveguide actually allows us to get a really wide off axis coverage, which is gonna be very important, especially when we're designing rear surround speakers. As far as the compression driver goes, I had some Celestion 1745s on hand. And so for those, I did have to get an adapter to use with this waveguide, but the 1746 is the exact same driver, and that does have the TPI connection, so you could just skip the adapter by going with the 1746. Designing the box seems like it's gonna be something really easy to do, and it's not. It's actually a little bit more complicated than that, and that's because you've got a lot of things going on. You go, uh, one, the depth that we're working at. We wanna to try to keep this as skinny as possible. Now, typically, the woofer is going to be the one that determines the depth of the cabinet because it's usually the one that sticks it in the farthest, but not on this build. In this build, it's actually the compression driver along with the waveguide. And that's just a little over seven inches, which means that really this box needs to be about eight inches deep. So that was pretty much taken care of for me. Now, once I figured out the port size that was gonna work well with, with first port resonance and wasn't gonna have a problem with chuffing, that ended up being a 20 by 14 by eight box. Now that I know it's gonna fit perfectly, we better go ahead and build it. As you can see, I took a lot of time designing this on the computer to make sure that it would be easy to put together, and this was really simple. I used the middle brace to be able to line up the sides and the rear baffle, and once I did that, the top and bottom lined up perfectly, and everything just was very square, and I gotta say, uh, that's one thing that I really do appreciate about a flat pack like this.
these ratchet straps with the corner clamps on them are a lifesaver. If you don't have any, you should pick some up. I'll make sure to link some in the description. Now I realized they didn't actually have any ports for this and to put any ports on the outside were going to be really hard so I had the option of PVC pipe or just making my own out of some spare MDF and that's what I did. I just used these dowels to kind of line up the holes as I put them together. Now this is a pro tip. What I do is I add a little bit of wood glue on the inside. Most of this is actually going to be wiped off. And that's because at the end, when I want to paint these ports, I want to paint them black. If you don't do that, the MDF just really absorbs that really well. With this, you really only have to do one coat of spray paint and you're done. As you can see, these ports weren't fitting as they were, so I had to go ahead and trim them up a little. I just used a table saw, trimmed those up, and they fit right in. All right, so now comes my favorite part, which is designing the crossover, because at this point in time, this is what really makes this speaker go from eh to wow. And this speaker really does wow. And I'm going to show you actually at the end just how wow it does. But first, let's go ahead and start working on this. Now, with the woofer, we we're able to do just a second order on the woofer. And as you can tell, we got a really smooth response with a really nice transition point for the crossover. That's really great. When we add the compression driver to it, it's a lot more sensitive. So we're going to see that bump up pretty high. Now, the cool thing is once we start adding an L pad and a third order crossover, everything evens out really, really well. And this came out to be a really great final response. You are gonna notice that it does look like it's going down a little at the high end. That's really something that XM's doing and not really what the speaker's going at. And we'll show you that at the end with the final response. When we're replacing the crossover in, you always wanna find what you consider the ideal spot. And for me, it was right here on the side. Uh, keep in mind, you can't put anything near the compression driver. There's just not enough depth back there. So really, you have to put it somewhere in that woofer cabinet. And to me, this was really the perfect location.
As of now, we've hit every single goal that we went out to. They're very skinny, only eight inches deep. They're the high sensitivity. Everything is spot on, but we don't know about the off axis response yet. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. What we're gonna go ahead and do is take a baseline of the speaker directly on axis. Once I get this, I'm gonna add a live response. Now keep in mind the speaker is directly in the center of the corner there on the table. So once it uh, gets even with the side of the table, that's gonna be uh, looking basically at the corner of the speaker. The Really the camera angle is a little bit off and that's on me. But go ahead and take a look at how linear it is. It's amazing that pretty much stays linear the whole way through until you're at the very extreme off axis. And then even then it's only after 12 kilohertz that it makes a big difference. I mean, this is exactly what we would want for a speaker like this. Now, when we started this journey, we wanted to make something like the Klipsch KPT series that, well, you can't buy. So we don't really know how much they are, but what we do know is that we hit every single one of the goals that we are going after. And honestly, this did not meet my goals. This exceeded every one of my goals and expectations. And this was just a really great project. Now, obviously with that wide off axis, it's gonna work really good as a surround, but it's also gonna work really good as a center channel. And honestly, I see that is where this could really, really thrive. I tried this as a center channel. And the thing about it is that typically when you have a center channel in there, when you start going to the right and left and go into different multiple places, uh, especially if you have one of those rectangular ones, uh, your sound starts to suffer a lot. Your off-axis response is bad. And this really guarantees that you have the exact same sound in every single seat that you're sitting in in your theater. And the cool thing is too, it also has a really great vertical off-axis that I didn't show you. So if you have a multi-tier configuration, that's gonna be another place where this is going to excel, especially as a center channel. Now, this was also my very first time with Celestion drivers using them in a home theater build like this. I couldn't be happier with uh, the components that we chose along with the waveguide that we chose it just really came out fantastic all right guys now if you want to hear these i'm going to go ahead and throw a video up on my forum so go ahead and make sure to check that link below now if you like this video and if this is your first time here make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button all right guys this is toys diy audio and i'm out